And um, I hope afterwards we'll have a little bit of time in which that can also explain more about uh, what we see. This is a film which is made and was made by the Commission by the Memorial Commission for 1999. It's a film in Texas. Only four or five days ago, I was uh, showing people to Sanana, and in the way that Sanana does, he called me over for half a and said, I want to do this, stop that. <laughs> there are many hundreds of these subtitles, and I hope they are the right pitch, but what will be in the heart. Uh, however, there's a lot of reason for those who don't do the pitch. Because the film is intended for people who use portraits. In this respect, it is quite different from most films that have been made about 1999 and was indeed about the resistance. The voices in it are almost all theories, not entirely, there are a couple of sermons and so on. But the key agenda is that as I did, which were given to me by all the players I asked to see. And I myself, who have been part of this for a long time, learned a lot. <laughs> I hope, I hope you will also find it interesting. And in some cases, possibly offensive. Because uh, some of the big issues, some of the big centerpieces of what we have Talk about the main stories in many cases turn out to be much less sensitive. And we can possibly talk about that. But first of all, if I may, I'd like to introduce my colleagues. This is the audiovisual archive of the birth of Timonis. And we have established here, and um, the help of my colleagues over what is it now? Nearly 20 years, not quite. <laughs> um, about 5,000 viewers on the And And um, a part of that is more or less accessible, documented, archived, and managed through our digital server system. And this server system is there, it's managed by my colleague Tony and others. Uh, we have started all this together with this whole ignorance of archiving, because archiving is extremely challenging. And I knew almost nothing about it when I started. If I had known, I guess I might not have started. But my colleagues have also learned that there is no training, no education uh, on archiving. One of our models are the oldest apartment of national archive in France. And they are still partners of ours in the source. They keep about 500 hours of our material. But to become an archivist there, you need 13 years of education and about four years of university specialization in France. And in Timor, we have precious little education over many years and none whatsoever in terms of archive. Nonetheless, we have achieved something. The UNESCO has recognized us in the middle of the world. And this in itself is a great tribute, not just to us, but I think to people here, because it's a story that they recognize rather than the skills of a camera or whatever. We ourselves in Kimo now are on the cusp, we believe, according to the Prime Minister, of becoming a public institution. Now this will require the government to support us. It's our part of now we've done sometimes and sometimes not. But we have survived. And we are hopeful that this might provide a new stability and we will be able to look after the materials that the other people have, which are probably on the way out at this point. Anyway, I don't want to spend too long talking about the archive. I want to go on to this point. And let's 
Vai dire quando attività di resistenza nel locale indonesio, fondamento primo ma non, a cara locale luan di ufono ne. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
parallels from South Sudan. So the process may be different. But the situation which I just witnessed here, I would say exactly more than 100 percent the situation the people of South Sudan went through. Exactly, exactly the same. And then I'm very much responsible to formulate the journalist who took the film in that serious situation and some of that is with us, as I was told. So that is great for me to witness. A day before I witnessed, uh, I went to the site of uh, massacre and I saw the photographs which were there and there were not very much different from the vision we went through. Somebody said, currently we have some sort of national dialogue, it's under process, underway, it's on the regime, the end of it, it is starting from the master to the regional level, and now the last leg is the regional conference for one of our regions. And then we go to the national conference. And what is that national dialogue all about? It is about giving the opportunity for the people of the grassroots. What is that, that opinion? How things are moving in the country? And as you see, and we have seen, at the end of that random, the joy and happiness at the end of that random exactly is ended up in the way that we have seen here. Where people went to the side, when it was announced that we would be going for a random, uh, everybody was doubting. First of all, the doubt was what? The doubt was that the people of South Sudan, the rate of literacy is very is zero. So for for the enemy, they were believing that you no, know, these people are savage, they don't know what they're doing. Only few who were fighting the war who are shouting that if you can go for a random they will vote for the unity of the country. Means that they will vote for that favor. And by good luck, I'm a witness, there was an agreement which was reached in, 19, in 2005 with our leader, a very tough man, Lady Dongara, who died only five months after that agreement in a plane crash. So people thought with the death of Dongara, that will be doomed of the SPRM and SPRA. But since we don't work that way, and I was, I was among those few who were appointed by our government, the regional government to represent the government in Germany of South and I was a member of the cabinet. And while we were discussing the cabinet, we were about four or five of us from South Sudan. In the cabinet, we had been told that if the South, they will not make it. They will get confused, and they will not be able to vote quietly. But signal is start to show in Khartoum. What was that signal when people had to do registration? The people who are hailing from South Sudan to avoid conflict in the United not to against it. So the enemy of the referendum saw that this something of the wrong with this signal. But in the southern part, where the court was the overall majority of people who vote, everything went very well. And the day of the polling, people went to the side the way I saw it here.
Many old people who have had only a few days for their life that were that we finished. If they die after they cost that book, they will be very happy. Uh, then what happened on that night? People went and everybody gave up in the morning. Some people started as early as 6 o'clock in the evening. And they took every single one of them to sit there so that at 5 o'clock in the morning when the podium, the podium will start, they will get even more there. The podium was done very peacefully in a very well mannered and the international community, media, went to Cuba and visited every side, every portfolio station. People were surprised when the result was announced. It was 99 points count, which were very surprised. But everybody was delighted and happy. And South Sudan acquired independent away communities for that independent the unfortunate situation, which is very unfortunate, and from this state, I'm appealing to the international community and to the families to work with the people of South Sudan. Because two years later, three years later, we got another conflict. The conflict which is, I call it a disease in the third world of whether that it is the issue of the conflict of the leadership of any situation. But that conflict erupted in 20, 2013, which in the no time is spread like a white and in a very short time, we lost a lot of people who can be counted in thousands. And that conflict is there, as I speak today to you. I need to say it is really a real situation, but a sort of peace and reality between the whole parties in the country within South Sudan. 2015, an agreement was issued by the of law, which is known as the Act, and is on now the last 2018, the Act and the this agreement is not moving the way it wish, and it got a new device. After utilization, after utilization, area which people thought they were moving were corrected. Now, the somehow dragon feet is not even moving the way we want it. And you want to say it again, it is very beautiful to both sides to the people of South Sudan so that they overcome this situation. It is very painful that people fought very hardly working for a long, long day to achieve and at the end of the day the same people are fighting together are killing themselves are killing themselves and killing the same people who they liberated. But that is very, very painful. Simply for so that X and Y will become anywhere. And X and Y is from this tribe and now one is from other tribe. Because X and Y become very sharp, the other one. Uh, these are elements which make that country to be in the world that they are in now. 
And I know very well some of your men and women went and participated in the United Nations peace reports in South Sudan. And your leader went up to work to South Sudan to visit your people who were in the field. That's not what I've come back. Uh, that situation is there. We are still a very far to our people. The international community like, is not very happy with us because that one thing that brings up on us that seems that they're not doing much. Therefore, we need everybody to come on aid so that not only our aid, also to pray for us. Thank you for that, that we are to a bit perfect. Maybe we are not faithful enough. Uh, this situation is a wild a lot of work. We talk about reconciliation, and now we are in line of all of a But the question is, uh, the dialogue, the reconciliation, is not enough if the people are not committed to dialogue. So dialogue is a situation where people will con get convinced that we need to reconcile me and my brother, me and my sister, me and my father, me and the community around. If that reconciliation would be take that way, it will lead to success. But if still the enemy of bullying, everybody who wants a reconciliation with the way that you are, you are going to be a winner, that they will be a winner and loser, and that that will not be a reconciliation. And you do see meaning. Therefore, it needs a more commitment to our leadership. Second, our president is for that. But he said it's not enough because our bosses are not for that. They say those are something which they require to be answered. Now so far today as I talk to you, everything has been done. But the same things are not working. There is nothing besides that the Pope of the Catholic Church will invite all of our leaders to Rome, Vatican, and he have done something we have not done to any other nation except to the people of South Sudan leaders. By kissing the pig so that we do that they will consign. But they come back, they didn't show side of that big case we put that by the book. Therefore, I think we need more something to be done so that the people of South Sudan come out of that situation. Uh, therefore, I really, I don't know how much to say, only what I want to say is that I'm so much happy uh, to see Witness the situation by the situation. I'm, I'm not a leader, I'm a participant. The process which I've seen here, when I was wishing, what we were looking at the protocol, we were taking on the massacre side, that is the situation I said, also I went through. And the sound of that, I'm the same. Thank you very much.
to lead the session for a round table discussion on demolished the Ethiopia. So we'll have a panel from representing international solidarity. Okay. I'll leave it to Mr. Felis. So we'll let the session. Thank you. For the development of this country. By saying that as a moderator for today, uh, we still have some time for the day to invite some of the participants to give a reflection, a uh, message, especially on the Timor-Leste reconciliation journey, on the equation of the 20 years of our celebration of popular consultation. I have in my list today, since we also, we have listened to our uh, delegates and ambassador from GIS, uh, South Sudan, representing the GIS class country, we are here today, also we have our colleagues from International Solidarity, we have our Alex of Tunisia, youth group are here, I can see we have civil society organizations, so I would like to give an opportunity. The first group, one from International Solidarity Organization, and one to civil society organization, and also another opportunity for Alex of Tunisia, if you want to do any reflections or comments about the meeting session today. So now I open the floor. Uh, I would like to invite who wants to start. I can see one hand, that's from International Solidarity. Colega uh, Civil Society Civil, anyone? Civil Society Organization? Alex Zubinturi Sira? At least we start with three. Three people? Okay, if not, we go with two. I can see two hands uh, as well. So I'll start with the gentleman. Can I start you ask, uh, by starting your name, where you're from, and then you're free uh, to do a reflection or comments about it. My, my name is Peter Pinklet, and I'm the secretary of the International Platform of Jurists for East Timor. Since the liberation of East Timor, we are working with the question of Western Sahara. Western Sahara, the question of Western Sahara and of East Timor are like two drops of water. Except for international law, they are exactly, exactly the same. The difference, of course, is that East Timor is already free, it's already a States, we see in the United Nations, and Western Sahara is still under the oppression of Morocco. It's still occupied territory, at least for four, third, four fifths of the territory. Uh, I was, I would like to comment on this uh, documentary of Max Stahl. I was very, very impressed by it. Of course, I told you already, I need a copy. Uh, I, I took slides since the beginning of the campaign for the referendum until the very, very last day when we were, uh, I would say, saved by the, uh, by uh, Anne Gomes, who was uh, at that time in Jakarta and organized a, a charter who took us from, uh, from Dili to, to Jakarta. I was in the in the but in the the truck of the uh, Indonesian police, the Indonesian uh, uh, military, uh, I was taken from Hotel Makota to the to the, the airport with exactly with Step Fasser that we saw here and was the, the representative of the Dutch television. Uh, a, a great woman, by the way. She came immediately after that in October when the the, the to the, um, the Dutch uh, uh, reporter who had been killed by the, by, by the military, the Indonesian military. Uh, and, uh, and she, I don't know if you know that, but the, her husband was the, the cameraman 
and he became so depressed when he saw the body of the, the journalist that later he committed suicide. It's a very, very sad story. She made a, a very beautiful documentary for, uh, uh, for uh, Al Jazeera, where she works now. I would like to finish with uh, congratulations for South Sudan. <laughs> Uh, for one good reason is that the first measure of South Sudan when they uh, reached the independence was to recognize the Sahrawi Republic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Before I pass on to Bruce, uh, I would like to invite again if anyone from civil society, local civil society organization or Alex Zubin to this event, feel free. Uh, uh, we still have time for you to do any reflection or comments about our session today. So I can see the two hands. Alex, the question is to have a poll. Thank you for that. I'm going to see your name in the long room. It's good to see this. One of our young people have raised their hands to see something. Now I would like to invite uh, Bruce. I'm to see you. Uh, thank you, Ricardo, Dr. Felix. Uh, I am personally very overwhelmed and humbled, and I have a deepest respect to Max and his team for this very, very powerful film, which has all the elements of the struggle not only of these degrees, but also of all of us who are part and parcel of this struggle. And as our friend from South Sudan said, the story of this team, where it's also our stories in our respective context. In the Bangsamoro, in Mindanao, in the South, Aceh, West Papua now is in the throes of violence too. <laughs> South Thailand, Italy, and all other, the other conflicts around the world. So this film is a testament to that kind of struggle of people. I met Max a long, long time ago. We were at the upset. He was a very, very until now, very energetic man. And chronically, the history, the history of the peoples of East Timor and their supporters like, like us. And so, watching this film, and I dare say, this should be submitted to the Oscars, and this will be a running winner of the best documentary film. But even if not submitted, it's already a winner to all of us, I see. I think this is very powerful film. But my reflection is this too. The Timor struggle, while we are celebrating your 20th anniversary, still continues. Still continues. There are things that have yet to be achieved. There were elements in the film that reflected Trauma, death, sacrifice, betrayal, treachery, real politic. People who were former foes became friends. People or groups or governments that were behind the occupation suddenly turning around to be friends and now being celebrated as such. So these are the nuances and things that the film captured that I think we should also be, and I'm sure we are all sharp enough to see. That is why we thought we need to know that this makes us also determined, be determined to continue the project, the struggle, the project of independence, of self-determination of your people. And by watching this, we also watch ourselves. We rediscover our own lives. We rediscover our own struggles. And that is why we are very happy, and I am personally very humble to be here amongst you, the brave, gentle, timorous people who are the real heroes in the field. You may have leaders there, but you are the real heroes. You were the ones who shed blood. You will have 200,000 plus plus deaths and sacrifice. You were the ones jumping over the fence, over the barbed wires, 
confronting the militias, the Indonesian military. Even those who were brought only, they had to do it some, somehow because they had to survive. I even heard someone from your government telling me a story about one of the leaders of the Indonesians who said he cannot turn back because his family will be killed. He was a leader of the militia, but he wanted to turn, but he couldn't. He was already trapped. And so these are the stories that also need to come out. And I'm sure we all know these stories. And I thank you. I thank Max, Alex, Heather, Hugo, Agao, all the others who, were, who have been responsible in getting me and our small contingent of the Asia Pacific Coalition for East Timor. Please stand up, my colleagues from the Asia Pacific. Good afternoon, I'm Joe Joseph from Malaysia. Uh, 
now presently I was one of the activists with that said uh, many years ago. Now I'm a commissioner with the National Human Rights Commission of Malaysia. Uh, this video was also, I was leading a group of 20 students coming in for the referendum. We had to go through three militias from Matambua to Dili to make it and also many more uh, militia blockades to go out. And the most painful thing that I think, I don't know whether they have that clip, is that morning briefing uh, by the UN, the day after the referendum, where the person in the UN said, things are very bad, even the UN cannot protect ourselves, Please take care of yourself, all the best. Press conference over. We came for some direction and this is it. I was new to this and I was okay. You just do what you want. And this was us, international. And the locals were crying for us not to go. I think the solidarity was captured. The more we left, the more they could do. And uh, one of the uh, most painful parts of it, my own education was as a photo of Kamal Bamadaj. I was in UNC that time, so when a Malaysian student was killed here, we were wondering, wow, somebody's been killed for something else, and you never even thought after our country. So I remember a lot of discussions about, about Kamal uh, and the uh, Santa Cruz uh, massacre. Uh, the, the other element, people like Sharad, myself, Gus, and others, uh, also had a small experience of being detained locked up or deported because of uh, the upset in Malaysia, the conference. I mean, it's very small compared to your video. But what the reflection I remember is not about our detention, but it's about the big brother power. Malaysian government, many of your things, is a very powerful government. But I remember that time in Mate, because of the phone call to big brother Suharto, he had to organize to close the conference, to arrest Malaysian lecturer and myself for a few days in the lockup, to forcibly deport all the foreigners because they did not want to, to make Big Brother unhappy. And I see Big Brother still playing power in, uh, in all the conflicts around the region. So I hope that uh, we will be able to stand up to Big, big Power and continue this uh, solidarity. Uh, for Timor Leste, now I think with your freedom in Timor Leste, we also need your solidarity in so many parts of Southeast Asia. So I think in 2016, Agao and the team all of us organized the ASEAN People's Forum. Uh, we are still trying to make uh, Timor Leste a full member of ASEAN. And we don't know why. After 20 years of this struggle, you automatically qualify to be a member of ASEAN. <laughs> but it's not really happened yet, so we wonder why. We will need to push our governments uh, to actually support uh, your government uh, uh, in this uh, uh, forum. And I want to congratulate you uh, for the struggle. I think that next generation, which is the young people, will, you must think what will happen in 20 years and what video will Max do of your 20 years from now to next. Because that's my reflection for Malaysia. We are celebrating the new Malaysia one year after 62 years of a very oppressive government. So we are feeling happy, but now when I look at this video, I think in 20 years will we have a powerful video to say we sustain our freedom or it will all go back down. And that's my worry, because already after one year, signs of all the promises are falling and failing. So I hope that we will keep up the spirit of the original reason for independence for Malaysia, the original reason for the change, and we will be able to celebrate come five years, ten years, and uh, eight years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I've noticed that we come to the the time where it has been scheduled, but allow me, since the delegation for Burundi has raised hand, allow me to give a, a last opportunity. This is another one. Uh, I believe that everyone wants to say something, but... Uh, I'm Ambassador of the Union of Europe. I'm the President of uh, the National Council of National Reconciliation in Burundi. I have no enough English to, to give a, a long uh, speech, but just to thank the General Secretary of G20 
G7 plus, who gave me opportunity to see this beautiful country, who gave me the opportunity to see this beautiful country and to, uh, to hold some events like uh, the event of Ipicha, the event of uh, meeting between Timor Timorese and Indonesia in the border. It was very instructive, very instructive. <laughs> but uh, the, what I want to, to add is a proposition. All the collective monuments all over the world of reconciliation. We should write on the front of those collective monuments, never read again. Never this again. It will be very significant. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Fukunani. We, we don't really have this occasion happen uh, often. So I would like to request for all of your uh, agreement whether we can extend a few minutes. Since I can see there are four people have raised hand. Uh, Mana Janelle, Mana Biela Carlos, there was a gentleman in the back. John. John and uh, I'm from City Society, if I'm not mistaken. So allow me, uh, let's give uh, a bit more of time to listen to four of them, then we can conclude. Everyone agree? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. So let me invite start by Mana Janet. Come close. Come close. Come close. Okay. Mana Bela Barrios to start.
we should know also to not turn our back from other people from another part of the world that need us. West Papua today, West Papua today need us. We should, we should remind our government that, you know, get rid of the big brother things. Get rid of big boss things. Justice is justice. Reality is reality. We all should not remember, forget our past. As if now we shake hands, okay, reconciliation is so important. But the truth is the truth. We should not change things around just because we're going to upset a few people and hurt so many people. This is not we fight for. We fight for what? We're not fight to please a few people who are happy to be in the power that we put them there. Thank you, Max. I'm one of your fans. Every time you talk, I always like to listen. So let's give up a round of applause to Manabella, guys. Next, I would like John. Thank you, uh, Bella. It's always a tough speaker to follow. <laughs> Don't know what to I'm John Miller with the East Timor and Indonesia Action Network. E10, E10 does more than just send out news and jobs. So that's a little bit I just want to speak about. I want to thank Max, actually for his inspiration. I think he came to New York in 92, soon after uh, E10 was forming, and along with some of the other Western journalists, uh, Alan Aaron and Wayne Goodman particularly, inspired E10 to begin and keep going. Uh, so I just think that's uh, says a lot for activist journalism. Um, I want to thank you for the film. Uh, the film does something that the Truth and Friendship Commission, which I'm here to criticize and have done before, uh, didn't do. It named names. And it's not just, as Bella said, knowing the history, it's acting on the history and what's been abandoned by the Timorese government, by the UN, by governments like my own is this notion that some of the generals, at least, some of the Henry Kissingers of the world, that back in the army didn't train the generals, should be held accountable, should go to trial. <laughs> in deference to my lawyer friend, should be a fair trial. But once they're convicted, you know, should go to jail, should face some consequences. And um, we understand why team war is reluctant to pursue that. Have many discussions with many people about that, including Max. I think. <laughs> also, reluctant to pursue that course. But uh, you know, since West Papua's been mentioned, we have to believe that the situation would be very different now for West Papua if some of those Indonesian generals had been held accountable for what they had done in Timor or Aceh or 1965. And Timor shouldn't carry that burden. But we also believe Timor would be better for having had some substantial justice. You know, it's a society, I think, that's still very traumatized by 24 years of occupation. And you know, I won't go through the list of human rights violations, we all know that. And so it's our belief, you know, as an ongoing solidarity organization, you know, to keep uh, ranting against the wind and call for an international tri tribunal. Uh, call for uh, countries to sort of risk their relations with Indonesia, so-called reformed Indonesia, to uh, you know, move some kind of substantive justice, incredible justice process forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there's an, there, okay. There's an uh, colleague from civil society. Mao, por favor. Thank you very much, Dr. Fernandez, for giving me this opportunity. Good 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthias Jemo Soares. I'm representing the National Youth Council. They're one of the organizations that transformed by the youth registered organizations before fighting or striving for independence in the, in the process of the demolition. Uh, 24 years struggle for independence. So I'm very happy to take this opportunity, one or two minutes, so, but before I'd like to welcome and give my respect to all of us here, the international delegations, international solidarity, especially our friends, our members, state from G7 plus. If you stay alone, but you committed to come to celebrate together with us in the 20 years of independence of Timor Leste. Related to the, our topic today, reconciliation journey, let me uh, start with a short word to say that the reconciliations of the Timor Leste between Indonesia. I consider, as a young generation, I consider it's a new civilizations, civilizations process to end the war between the country. Because our leader is really committed to end the war and focus to our development. If our country continues in the war, no development no peace for the people to survive. And especially for the young people, young generation to survive, to develop their self as a country. That's why I consider that uh, reconciliation, the people Leste, is a new civilization in a political level for the world in the 21st century. And when I, I see and I hear our leader, Sarana Guzman, when she was the Prime Minister in the fourth government, constitutional government, the philosophy that really encouraged us as the young people to say that goodbye conflict, welcome development. Thank you very much for Mambor Abu Sanana for your, your, your commitment to develop this country and all the national leaders in Timor Leste. Today, in our process of the state and nation building, our leader committed to bring the reconciliations for the world between the space G7+. Plus. It is the, the, the good lessons for us as a young people. We continue together, work together, we continue to develop this this space to give alarm for the world, especially the country that is still in the conflict. They, they must be stopped the conflict, the war, to give the space for the people, for the young people to survive. That's why I think that this moment, this year, Tomorrow, together we'll celebrate the 20 years of independence in Timor Leste. We'll be leave the good lessons for us and the young people in Timor Leste to look for our development. Without the, our history, we can walk for the future. And we consider our, our past as a, as a, as a lesson for us to develop our country. But the last, when we are working for the uh, uh, SDCS working group, we finalized the Timor Leste National Voluntary 
one of the matic talk about the reconciliations between the youth. Between the youth. We organized the public consulting in the national level, in the municipal level. All of the youth say that right now our country in the process of the reconciliations between the country and the world. But we need to focus the reconciliations in between the people, youth and youth, in this country. The youth must be stopped the crime and violence in Timor-Leste that focus the reconciliations and we contribute to support our leader to bring the reconciliations for another country in the world. That's why we can gain the the good name in the process of our development. That's why I recommend for the G7 Plus and especially as a youth, I'm very thanks to CNC, Mamu, for your commitment, commitment to organize this event, to mobilize all of us to come and lead this process. Thank you very much and God bless you Especially, must start with your team, and we pray for the hero that already died to bless you and your team. Because with your commitment, your contributions, you keep the history, the video, the photo, all of the documents to teach us as a young people. So the last, thank you very much. For this opportunity. We, we have almost come to the end of the session. Before I invite Mana Janelle for the closing, I can see that Mana Saskia, if I'm not mistaken, who asked for one minute uh, to do a reflection or comments. Thank you. Two short remarks. Um, my name is Saskia. I'm a human rights activist. I had the privilege to be here in 91, 99, and now again. And every time it touches me, the role of young people, it's amazing. In, in 91, in 99, and now I'm only here three days. But the vibrance of the young people, the activists, and also the people who work in the ministries and maybe for the government, I'm so touched that they want the struggle to continue. So I wish the youth, you know, you're the next 20 years, mountains of energy and perseverance and compassion. And the other small thing I want to say about reconciliation, for me it can be many things, but it must, in my view, be a tool for healing of trauma. Because in the neuroscience now with epigenetics, it's shown that people who have been traumatized, they give it on to the next generation. And there is collective trauma. And if that is not healed, truly healed with compassion, the risk of things boiling up is big. So I think that's a huge, still a huge, thing to happen. I even see it with the foreigners who have been in this team. We are still very touched too. You know, by all the pain that you've been going through. And I'll smuggle this film out if you want to. <laughs> Thank you. As a moderator for this session today, I would like to thank to all of you who gave your opportunity to share, to give a reflection. Allow me to conclude with two important points. The first one, let's continue a collaboration that we have started, especially to International Solidarity Group. As Manabella said, you have been with us in the past. Today, let's continue this collaboration for the future. Second, to all of our young generation, we have witnessed what happened in the last 20 years. 
Let's show to the world what Timor Leste will look like in the next 20 years. Thank you very much. In order to class our session today, I allow me to invite Mana Janel as an international advisor board for Shea to say a few words and also to close our session. just watched the film that Max Dahl made and with you Tony as well um, from showing the violence leading up to the United Nations referendum in 1999 and the violence that followed it. It's an incredibly powerful piece of work and I hope as many people can see it as possible. I was here in 99 as a British journalist, um, arrived in June 99 and stayed um, ended up staying in the UN compound with the IDPs until we were evacuated on September the 10th and then I came back in with Intervet on September the 19th. Um, you know, it's 20 years since it happened and I've been back here for the celebrations. It's been quite hard to remember everything this past week but watching this film has brought it all back and um, I remember the fear um, of what it was like to be here in the months before the referendum when the militia was stalking the streets. Um, I remember the resilience of the people and the determination to vote. Um, and I remember the 
the, pa the, the, the total panic and destruction afterwards and how, um, as a journalist, I felt that the UN had betrayed the Timorese people because they had promised them that they would stay after the vote. And um, although we had some very strong indications that the Indonesians would, more than strong indications, we had a document saying that the Indonesians would destroy Timor after the vote. Um, I remember, as a journalist at the time, being appalled that the UN had not prepared better. And when I stayed in the UN compound broadcasting and writing stories, um, the message that I gave at the time was, the Indonesians have armed and funded armed, funded, trained, supported the militia. This is not a civil war. This needs an international resolution. Um, I'm very pleased that the UN did bring the IDPs out of the compound and extremely pleased that the international forces came in and um, the situation was eventually resolved. Um, it's an incredible story, looking back on it now, um, to have been involved with all those years ago. Um, and I'm just very, um, very touched and moved by the film that, that took me back there. Thank you.